Hey, hello everybody, and welcome back to the Math Puzzle Crash Course. Um, got a little update. I'm working uh, on a video here right now that um, it's really an update of one that I did back in July. Actually, uh, it's a viral problem. It's all over the internet. Creates a lot of arguments. It's uh, this eight divided by two times the quantity two plus two equals what? All right, so uh, as always, if you'd like to pause the video here uh, and try to work this one out, if you're not sure, uh, go ahead and do that, and we'll come back and look at this together. All right, as I said before, this problem continues to show up on the Internet. It incites a lot of controversy. Uh, it's mainly due to the acceptance or lack of acceptance uh, of a convention that has some historical precedence known as implicit multiplication, uh, also known as multiplication by uh, juxtaposition. Um, but the order of operations convention, as it's as it's interpreted today, the modern interpretation of it, is pretty clear, and it's been used for a long time. Uh, but as I said, there's been some historical precedence in the past, uh, really for what I would think is a lesser known convention, uh, that attributes a higher priority to multiplication uh, that's implicit. Uh, now, I say, I'll say people argue a lot over this issue, and for the most part, I don't really care about the argument. But I guess I care enough to make a video that I hope a lot of people like, share, and subscribe. And let's be honest, these things don't show up on... They, they show up on the Internet for a reason, right? Because people want to get a lot of attention. And if you've got a YouTube channel... Part of that is trying to get some attention in, in the process of getting information out there. So, yeah, a lot of people are going to argue. Uh, there's going to be a lot of comments back and forth. Um, and people that don't really understand the, the modern interpretation of the order of operations, they'll often incite you know, the ambiguity of implicit multiplication. Uh, but they'll incite it in a wrong way. Um, and they do it in a way that kind of tarnishes the whole order of operations, really. Um, but first of all, what, what I want to get into, I'll get into that more. But first of all, what is implicit multiplication? What is multiplication by juxtaposition? All right. So really, what all, I'm, all it really is, it's a, whenever you see a number outside of parentheses like this, it's implied that this represents multiplication. So this is implying that you're multiplying two uh, by the quantity of two plus two. So if you were to look at this separately by itself, let's ignore this eight divided out here, it would be two times four or eight. Um, that's what that would represent. It's implying multiplication but between the two and the two plus two in parentheses. Now, According to the way that the order of operations convention is interpreted, um, that's PEMDAS, BODMAS, whatever, uh, multiplication and division are just solved from left to right in the order that they're encountered. So there's no priority given to implicit multiplication. That means that when you look at a problem like this, you would actually solve the 8 divided by 2 first, uh, and then the 2 plus 2. Um, in a brief review here, there are some acronyms out there. A lot of people screw these up. PEMDAS, BODMAS, BEDMAS, BIDMAS, all give you the same answer. These are just acronyms used in different English-speaking countries that represent the same four steps, not six steps, but four steps of order of operations. For example, PEMDAS is uh, most used here in the U.S. Um, that's parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition and subtraction um, that uh, uh, multiplication and division have equal precedence and they're solved left to right um, and in bodmas even though the d comes before the m the same thing multiplication and division have equal precedence um, now there is some historical context for the prioritization of implicit multiplication uh, which then would take higher priority uh, if you were solving it that way, you you know, you still, no matter what you uh, go by, you would still solve the 2 plus 2 in parentheses first. 2 plus 2 is 4. Uh, now, if you were looking at implicit multiplication and you think that has priority, uh, and I hear people use this phrase like you got to clear the brackets. You have to 
uh, resolve the brackets. And when they're what they're talking about is they're they're basically talking about implicit multiplication when they say that. I don't know if it's that or if they're just misunderstanding uh, the order of operations. Uh, too many people will say that the answer to this problem is one because of PEMDAS or BODMAS. And that's false because PEMDAS and BODMAS do not prioritize implicit multiplication. People that are saying it's PEMDAS or BODMAS, they're really talking about like what I would call PEDGEDMAS or something. They're, you know, there's a J in there for, you know, the multiplication by juxtaposition. But anyhow, regardless, um, if you were following implicit multiplication, then the answer would be one, uh, using implicit multiplication as having priority or multiplication by uh, juxtaposition. But according to the standard, I should say the modern interpretation that's been around for quite a while now, uh, the convention is, is 16. Um, there's no precedence given to implicit multiplication. Multiplication is multiplication. There's no no difference. Now, I will say there are certain scientific calculators out there. I've got other videos uh, on some of the other viral problems where I've gone through and actually shown the manuals. Uh, there's different Casio calculators that actually specifically spell out in their manual that they do recognize multiplication by juxtaposition. Uh, most don't. Many do not do that. So there's a handful that do. Um, so you just got to be aware of that. There's some viral, viral pictures out there showing two calculators side by side that give you a different number. But, um, you know, although you, you might try to point to this as an ambiguity with the uh, implicit multiplication, um, it, it doesn't it doesn't negate order of operations. Now, um, again, most of this stuff is historical context. The implicit multiplication is more of an older thing. Um, the You've got this thing, the dreaded obulus, too, that keeps coming up. Uh, people are still misinterpreting that one. Um, there is context for the um, obulus. It just goes beyond the whole implicit multiplication thing. Um, back in Teutsch Algebra, and uh, it was a book from 1659, um, in that book, the obulus first appeared for division. Um, it's been interpreted differently over the centuries. Back in 1659, uh, it was Johann Rahn, who uh, lived between 1622 and 1676. Uh, he was a Swiss math mathematician who's credited uh, with the first use of the division sign, or also known as the obulus. Uh, and back then, um, everything to the left of that symbol was considered to be in a numerator, and everything to the right would be in a denominator. So what you would end up with would be 8 divided by 8, or 1. Now again, this is a really, really old interpretation of the obulus. Um, now that interpretation continued on and some other mathematics books, um, I don't recall the names. I saw one once, it was from the 1800s, uh, where it still used that interpretation. And again, it kind of would look like this. The idea was they looked at the obelisk as putting everything, the two and the two plus two in the denominator, which would give you one. Again, that's not not the way it's looked at today. Now. I would say a lot of a lot of mathematicians recommend not using the obelisk because of that of that issue. But again, uh, you're really talking about a very old interpretation of the obelisk. That's you know if you if you enter this problem into a scientific calculator, uh, you're not going to have the obelisk interpreted that way. It's just not going to be. Um, now there was an article. Um, gosh, I don't know if I have the link to that in this video. Honestly. Uh, I do back in a video from, I think, July 20th. Um, I'll try to remember to put that in here. But there was an article in there where, where a mathematician was actually going through that uh, about the interpretation of the obelus and, and brought that point up. But, uh, you know, it was a good, it was a good uh, explanation. It was from James Church. I think he says he's an assistant professor of computer science at Austin P. Is it P or P? Honestly, I don't know. State University. But... He brought this issue up about the obulus. Uh, again, that's kind of an old, old interpretation, though, uh, of the obulus. You won't really see that uh, listed that way. So just 
All right, so as we go on and look at this further, what does all this stuff mean, really? Well, you get a lot of arguments back and forth over uh, over this problem. And one of the things I keep seeing all the time, which I, I really find annoying, is how people want to use the distributive property to try to somehow prove an argument over the order of operations. Um, they'll try to do things like say, well, you know, you can distribute the two uh, you know, here between, you know, the, the two and the two plus two, and somehow they're wanting to use that as an argument, um, for this. And honestly, that, that's a really poor argument. The distributive property is irrelevant, is irrelevant to this answer. Uh, the distributive property is about how to multiply over a group sum, not about a precedence of operations. So regardless of whether you're somebody who's going to come here in the comments and argue for or against implicit multiplication, um, it's true, no matter how you look at it, if you've got 8 divided by 2 times the quantity 2 plus 2, everybody agrees that the first thing you take care of is what is inside of these parentheses. So that leaves you with 8 divided by 2 times 4, right? The issue is not about the distributive property. You can't use the distributive property to prove anything about implicit multiplication. The issue here, everybody, is that is whether you evaluate 8 divided by 2 first or whether you evaluate 2 times 4 first. Now, PEMDAS, the way PEMDAS is looked at and has been looked at for a long time, it just says you go from left to right. You look at multiplication and division from left to right. Multiplication and division have equal precedence, and they're evaluated from left to right, which means you would do the 8 divided by 2. And I see people on both sides of this argument keep using the distributive property to argue. You know, the people that are for Im implicit multiplication will say, oh, you're, you're distributing the 2. Uh, in here. And then everybody else says, no, the coefficient is 8 divided by 2. So once again, stop. I wish people would just stop using the distributive property altogether to try to prove anything concerning the order of operations. Uh, you're really just wasting your time. Um, and, and what about implied multiplication? What about implicit multiplication? Uh, you know, most calculators treat it the same way as regular multiplication. Most scientific calculators that are out there um you know any kind of group terms that you have they're typically grouped with parentheses uh some calc some scientific calculators actually will uh you know if i google if i type a problem into google that doesn't have uh, parentheses often google will automatically put them in there which is redundant around multiplication but but they'll do that um but again, group terms are typically grouped with parentheses if they're meant to be evaluated first. Uh, calculators are purposely programmed that way. Again, I've got other videos that do show some other scientific calculators uh, that kind of went against the norm, and they 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 do actually um, do actually handle mul um, multiplication uh, by juxtaposition. So you will find some of those out there. Um, and then what about the commutative property? Some people will bring this up too. You know, they'll they'll do some fancy math and say, well, the, again, the commutative property is irrelevant to this answer as well. The the commutative property has nothing to do with the order of operations. It's still once again the the only argument here is whether you evaluate eight divided by two first or whether you evaluate two times four first. Uh, the commutative property is just as irrelevant to this argument uh, as what the distributive property was. Um, you know, for example, like you have eight, um, and I could get rid of the obulus and put a slash in here, forward slash to say eight divided by two uh, times the quantity two plus two is equal to four times four equals 16. Uh, and also the quantity two times two times eight divided by two is also four times four. Uh, and this is using this mo the modern interpretation of the order of operations. Uh, multiplication and division still have equal precedence. They're solved left to right. Uh, no priorities given to implicit multiplication over explicit multiplication or division. So the way I look at it is, you know, I when I look at this problem, I'm I'm solving eight divided by two. 
uh, one, after I've resolved what's in here and I get 4, uh, then I'm doing 8 divided by 2 and getting 4, taking 4 times 4 and getting 16. Uh, that's the answer that I go by. That's that's the order of operations that I know and that I've grown up with, and, and I'm in my 60s, so uh, that's what I use. Um, that's that's really the way that it should be done. Um, so yeah, I, this is one of these problems. Um, I've got a number of the videos concerning these viral problems out there. Um, hopefully I can get away from some of these. I want to get on to some other topics, but uh, this, these seem to generate a whole lot of interest and a whole lot of uh, controversy and arguing. So that's it, guys. That's all I have for this subject. Um, hopefully I can move on to something else now. But um, if you like the video at all, please consider liking, sharing, subscribing. And I look forward to seeing everybody in the next video.